Well, let's get more reaction to this uh, story. Build One South Africa leader, Musi Maimane, says the Deputy President, Paul Mashatila, must personally pay the medical bills for the victims of the assault by members of his VIP unit. He's here in studio with us right now. Good afternoon, Mr. Maimane. Welcome to today, and thank you very much for your time. Just for me, my first question will be in this context, listening to some of the comments that have just been made, that have been played. Let's have restraint. Let's call for investigation. It's perfectly understandable, and it's a mature way. But for me, it says you don't even need to begin the investigation before you take some action, because the video is very clear about what happened. What is your view? No, and good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, along with many South Africans, I think the incident deserves as much condemnation as possible. But we've got to get past condemning and using words. We've got to take deliberate action. And the first action is simple. Any political principle knows that when an allocation is given to you for VIP protection, you have the right to pick and choose. In some instances, who should be there and who should not be there. Therefore, Mr. Mashatile, it is incumbent upon him. If he wants thugs protecting him, then he must keep the team in, in the table. Should he have acted by now? It should by now have been a case of him going, I do not want people who assault fellow citizens to be in my VIP protection unit. They must be removed. He must have made contact with the victim and said, I am coming myself to come and make sure that your health is looked after. Regardless of any kind of provocation, no citizen in this country should ever be treated in that manner, simply by people designed to protect them. You have issued a statement saying you should personally pay for, for, for these people who have been injured. Uh, why? Because ultimately, you as the principal are responsible. Because we can't, we've got to get away from this culture that uh, says to political principles, no, when there's a crisis, let those who are in the director general or whatever be responsible. The humane thing, Mr. Mashatil, and I want to appeal to his sense of humanity, to say your team assaulted someone. Someone is in hospital. Yeah, it's today. not good enough that he just issued a statement about it. It can ever, never be. He should by now say whatever the medical expenses are, he should cover them and make sure personally that actually this person is looked after. Because ultimately, in an abuse of power relationship, which is what we're seeing now, what South African citizens are feeling is that actually the priority is the politicians, not the people. The people have to deal with crime, deal with all sorts of things, yet the politicians are protected. I think we've got to invert the triangle. It's emerging that apparently the deputy president was not even there around when those two black BMWs did what they did. Yes. I mean, it's even worse because who are they protecting? Absolutely. And it's the culture of an abuse of power. It's a culture that says it's okay to abuse citizens if you are seen to be protecting those who are politically connected. The flip side of the story is that if those same officers were caught on video rescuing a child, the deputy president would have been standing celebrating them today and owning it. Why in this instance, when they are doing something as heinous as a crime they did, is he not owning it? He must own it. I, I'm, I, I've not been in parliament before, unlike you. I'm not a legal expert. But when I looked at that, I'm thinking, if you're a law enforcement officer, which they are, somebody commits a violation whatever violation on a highway, you don't behave like that. No. You rather take them to the side and you can arrest them if they are breaking the law. You don't literally assault individuals like that, no matter what they have done. The crime in this instance, what I saw in the video was somebody waving a firearm that didn't seem like the, vi the victim had a, their own force against the police. Secondly, it was very clear that there was an assault case. It was a whole bunch of individuals, not de-escalating the situation. Nine or ten of them, they heavily armed. Absolutely. They did not de-escalate it. They sought to abuse a victim. It felt as though they wanted to send a clear message that they have the power and they can abuse it. We can't sit now, back there's, to there's a case. danger here that sometimes come up, especially in South Africa, when incidents like this happen involving a high-profile politician like the deputy president, of politicizing the issue. Mm. And how do we avoid that? You, as a, as a prominent political leader, how do you think we avoid this? So we focus on the rights of those citizens that was so much violated on that highway. It's why I'm saying beyond the legalities, beyond the politics, Deputy President Mashatila must do the right thing, go visit the victim, apologize profusely for what took place, take responsibility. And fire these guys. Fire the principals, the people who were involved, and pay for the medical bills. I think it's the most humane thing to do. Give all to. You fail to do that, you are 
also yourself endorsing of the abuse of power. Yeah, how confident are you that that could happen? You are in parliament, you are a political leader, and you know what's at stake currently a, a year or so before the general elections Correct. next year. Correct. How confident are you that the well, humanity I, of it will come out of this situation? I'm hoping that Mr. Mashatila holds, holds, uh, gets that within himself. Because, again, we saw it with Marikana. We keep asking people to come and apologize their own pitch. In this instance, it's a simple thing. I'm really not asking for anything impossible. He should do it, and it has no legal implications on him. He's not saying he beat up someone. Yeah, uh, no, no, saying, no, would it have any legal implications on correct. the individuals involved? He is because saying, the investigation will still take his course. He's saying, before I'm deputy president, I'm also a fellow South African. If he fails that exercise, it tells us that he thinks he's more special than the young person who was lying on the side of the road today. You know, my elder son, I'm sorry to just use a personal example, but when I saw that, yeah. I've got an elder son, I've got four children. My yeah. elder son is on the road often Correct. with his baki. That's his business. Yeah. And then I thought, he could fall victim to that abusive behavior. Therefore, any young South African, or any South African, as you said, should be scared today. Am I being dramatic? You are not at all. And it speaks broadly. It's not just our own kids. I've got little kids, so I get it. But it's also the abuse of this blue light sirening. And it's not, it's not the first the time we've had blue no, light no, 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 abuse no. stories. It's, it's this idea that political principles are important. My policy stands firm. I say strip away blue light brigades. Let's stop treating politicians like demigods, as if where they have to get to is more important than the people. Let us understand that the rules of the role apply to everybody. And in this instance, as a deputy president, he should be the first to lead by example. I've traveled all over the world. I've seen leaders who for themselves don't feel the need to have the surrounding power and make them seem as if they're bigger than the people. It's a sense of service to the people that's been lost in our political class. In fact, just the other day, another video that went viral on a positive side came from the Netherlands. Correct. The prime minister of the Netherlands walks to an optometrist on his own to have his eyes done before he walks to work. Uh, Pr prime Minister Mark Rutte, who I know very well as a personal friend of mine, I've spent time with him in a way that I was even shocked that there was hardly any security around him. What, he doesn't feel he needs to be protected from the people who he serves. Why do our politicians and, uh, need in, that protection? In fact, to, to bring it even closer home, in 1982, I was in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. I saw with my own two eyes Mualimu Julius Nyerere, the late president, being driven to work. No blue light. Mm. One vehicle, one driver. Mualimu sitting in the back seat reading a newspaper. President Mandela, when he came in, in 94, there wasn't all of this entourage that we're seeing now. It's escalated progressively as people sought to abuse power and protect themselves against the people. Let's scrap them, let's own it, and let's make sure that Political principles are servants of the people like anyone else. Okay, we have asked you about the politicization. How do we do it? I'm going to conclude by asking, how do you remove emotion from it? Because I, I'm, as a South African citizen, I'm angry. When I see that, my fellow countrymen are being treated like that by law enforcement agents who are supposed to protect us. But they're not even with the pen they're supposed to protect. I get angry. But how do you remove in emotion out of it? Or is it possible at all? Or we need to get angry. We must for things be. to be fixed. Uh, uh, Braden, we must be angry. We must. But in our anger, what we need to ask for is that those men must be fired by the end of the week. We don't need a special investigation. We don't need the evidence is sufficient. Because if you commit a secondary violation, it would be that they get away yeah. with attempted assault. Yeah. In that fact, would in anger fact, us even more. Yeah. In fact, from your words, uh, it, it looks like Paul Mashatila, the deputy president, cannot afford not to act in the right way. Absolutely. He has a brilliant opportunity out of a tragic uh, circumstance to show that he's a true leader. And he starts there, and Minister Pegit Kaele, who all of these men are effectively all accountable to, and, that, and, the, and the Commissioner of Policing, they must be fired by the end of the week. That's the least we can ask for. Yeah. We saw it in our own, with our own eyes. Let's demand accountability from public leadership. Thank you very much for your time and your views this afternoon. That's Musi Maimane, the leader of Build 1SA.